Hey everybody, it is Thursday. That means that the Mediavine Summer of Live is back. I am Jenny Guy, Mediavine's Marketing Associate, and I'm coming to you from Charleston, where at, this is a hotel room, if you could not tell by the awesome artwork behind me. Um, and we are uh, sponsoring the Haven Conference here, the Haven Design Conference. So we're really excited about that. And I'm also very excited about my guest today. I have the man with the longest title and the awesomest <laughs> vest. It is Phil Bone, our Senior Vice President of Sales and Revenue. Hello, Phil. Welcome to our summer Hi. live. Thank you. All righty. So let's let's start with. Um, can you go ahead and introduce yourself for us and tell us how you came to Mediavine and how you came to be a Senior Vice President of Sales and Revenue? Yeah. Uh, so I've been with Mediavine for about six months, uh, a little over six months now, since last end of last November. Um, and prior to that, I was with She Knows Media and, and Blog Her. Um, for about eight years total, I was with She Knows. Um, and I worked, you know, I was employee number nine at She Knows. They were based out of here in, in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, and then with them for three years, took a break, and then came back for five consecutive years until I joined uh, Mediavine. Um, and I started off in this, on the sales side there and, and kind of just had my hand in everything as the company grew and ended up focusing for the last uh, almost six years strictly on on programmatic and, and that side of the revenue <clears throat> and growing that. Um, and uh, not many people know this, but Mediavine used to be a, a She Knows site um, back in the day. And oh. Eric slid off, broke up with me um, about oh. six years ago. Uh, not so much me, but but others. And we, we stayed in contact. Yeah. And we stayed in contact over the years um, and still had a very similar strategy um, for monetization and, and how a business, business should run and, and where the focus should be and and uh, kind of found each other again uh, end of last year and started talking about uh, possibly working together. And uh, and here we are. Um, so now, yeah, so I, uh, th th a lot of this, a lot of what I do now was kind of in Eric's hands and um, I think it, it Becoming becoming a bit much as we, you know we got to two thousand and three thousand publishers um, and so I'm just helping Eric out on on this side of things and, and helping the business run as uh, as smoothly as possible um, and make as much money for all of our publishers as possible. Money, I mean that's you said the magical words that we all love to right? hear. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest. I am mystified by most of what you do. I've told you this before. There are a lot of acronyms. There's a lot of, of like flow charts and, and it's just, it's not my thing. So um, what, what you said programmatic, so that's what you've been focusing on. What yeah. is programmatic advertising? Can you explain so it? So programmatic is, is uh, I mean, at the base minimum, it just means automated. Um, and, and part, uh, and what it's automating is um, the uh, auction process to sell your ads. Right, uh, the the old model of selling um, a million impressions here and there to this advertiser and that advertiser was very time consuming. It took up a lot of bodies to try and get these campaigns uh, set to perform properly, to to run where they want to, when they want to. <clears throat> if an advertiser wants to change creative, they have to email all of the publishers. So programmatic and and uh, the real time bidding RTB. There you go. That's your first acronym. Number one. Number one. Right, and. Um, it, it basically is, is high speed eBay, right? So it allows your ads to be sold in real time um, and with as many bidders and buyers as possible, right? And, and that auction price then drives up the price um, of the overall uh, value of, of your inventory. Um, and so that's the, the main focus of, of what we do and, and where the majority of your revenue comes from, right? Um, for all publishers and then um, on the sales side of it, you know, we're we're focusing on um, reaching agreements with you know, Procter and Gamble and AT and T and, and all of those guys because they're very particular about where they run their ads. So we have right. to show that we're qualified and, and give them maybe a little different access than they might have elsewhere. But for the most part, those are the things that that we focus on on, on a daily basis, right? Is to make sure that um, we're getting the highest price possible for all of your ads to make it uh, seamless for for advertisers to be able to transact on that and, and to make sure everything works and functions and, and makes sense for visitors and, and all that in between. So not a lot of things, really yeah. simple, just <laughs> like easy. simple. It's real. Okay. Well, Courtney Odell wanted, she said, Phil, you're my hero. Since you come <laughs> on, my revenue has skyrocketed. Thank you. Thank you for all you do for us. 
Uh, Courtney, uh, good to hear from you, and, and it was great to meet you in, in Utah. Um, and yeah, uh, I, I can't take all the credit for that. Like Eric and, and team, uh, there's a lot of things behind the scenes um, that like I have absolutely nothing to do with on the development side and, and all the things on site speed. Um, I, I will agree that site speed is very important and, and it's you know something that we should focus on as a company, but you know, I have very little to do with that, to be honest with you. Um, but I, I can help make it you know a priority for the company, which I think is helpful. Um, so yes, thank you, Courtney. Um, there's a lot of things that go into it and, and I wish I could take all the credit, but I can't, um, but thank you. Well, uh, there's definitely been a shift for sure. And guys, I just wanted to say again, I'm with Phil Bone. He is our Senior Vice President of Sales and Revenue. If you have any questions for him about programmatic advertising, we're going to talk about how to make your site even more attractive for ads to kind of blend with the blog post that Phil came out with this week. But this is Programmatic 101. We're talking about all the ways that this works and how this the, the ads get on your site. So we were talking about programmatic advertising. He basically told us what that meant. So Mediavine said when they first started this arm of their company uh, to be full service ad management, they said they operated programmatic first. So can you explain that for us and how that is how that was different and still remains different? Yeah, so it's, it's a little along the lines of what I mentioned, right? So there was, um, before programmatic, it was you had direct sales, um, you know, selling a campaign and then uh, multiple teams working on getting that live and making sure that it functions and making sure that it works. Um, and, and what we've added uh, on the programmatic side is that you're able to, to uh, in it, sorry, in prior, it was a waterfall. So go to like your direct sales team right. um, and then it would go to you know, your second tier partners that have maybe a little lower CPM and then it would go to your bottom guys and hopefully someone would feel the impression. Right. So fill rates, you know, 50, 60 percent fill rate was pretty good um, six, seven years ago with the addition of, of programmatic and, and real time bidding, which let all of those things just compete at once. Um, that's the change. Right. So all of those things are now competing at once. Um, and that's you know, what we've been with, with header bidding and, and uh, all of the things that we're working on now is to get as many buyers to compete at once, um, give them a, a base floor price um, that we know like, OK, this is what the value of this site is right now. Make it a little higher, make them work a little harder, try and, and drive the revenue there um, and and uh, it, grow everything from that aspect. Right. So um, I think that answers the question. Let me know if I'm missing. A piece no, I think there. it did. Okay. I think it did, because one of the things I and this has all happened really recently, this massive shift in the way that the digital app, I mean, digital advertising is relatively new speaking in yeah. terms of the world and then moving forward, this form of digital advertising is new. And it's it's exciting to see the way that you guys continue to develop and pioneer new things and new technologies and ways to make it easier. Right. So go going on that vein, so tell us what makes Mediavine different because you came to us from another place and you've, you've observed, you've been, around and seen all these different ways of doing things. What sets us apart? Is it our approach? Is our technology? What gives Mediavine publishers an edge in this industry? I think it's both of those things, right? So the approach of, of going programmatic first, um, instead of, uh, you know, other companies, the majority of their impressions are filled by um, programmatic partners. Um, they may not be the majority of revenue for all of them. Like there's some very large publishers out there that you, a Wall Street Journal is very protective of, of what they sell and they sell it to direct advertisers, right? Um, not every brand is as big and as well known as um, the New York Times. So that's very hard to accomplish. Uh, so for the rest of us, right, the majority of our impressions, the majority of our revenue was coming by these programmatic means. Uh, I, I think a lot of companies still focus on trying to um, grow the direct sales route <clears throat> and to bring that back. Um, and, and it kind of reminds me of print you know, 15, 20 years ago, it's like, oh, newspapers are coming back. People like to touch that. Trust me, trust me. Like this little handheld thing that you can get 30 newspapers in two seconds is going to fade away. Like, Lame. Having one, yeah, having one newspaper is, is the way to be, trust me. Um, so, I want my fingers to be stained. That's what right? I need. Buyers want me to take them to lunch. That's how deals get done. <laughs> like, they don't care about audience or performance. Like it's, um, <laughs> uh, I kid, but this is, um, I think this is one of the things that Mediavine latched on to pretty early is that if I take where the majority of my impressions are going, right, 
And if I can improve that CPM by 10%, that's a massive shift in, in revenue growth right there. Um, and, and being able to do that, and instead of growing 10%, we've been able to grow at 50% and 60%, right? Um, we'll still talk to direct buyers. Most of them want to transact um, programmatically now, or they want to do a programmatic guaranteed, which still fits perfectly into our wheelhouse and, and for what we do. Um, but we know we, we saw that this was the future, and this is the, the biggest chance for growth, right? Like, you take a look at where the majority of, of uh, your impressions of your inventory, right, of your product is being sold. And like, oh, if I focus on this piece and just continue to grow that, knowing that, it, I mean, that piece is just going to continue to grow, then we've got a, a viable business. Um, and I think just from that small aspect, um, you know, we've, we've been able to achieve what we've been able to do here. Um, and then on top of that, you know, you, you talked about uh, the focus, right? So making those decisions, and then backing it up with strong tech, um, knowing that that these are the, the things that are important to Google. These are the things that are important to buyers. You know, viewability, um, site speed. Uh, um, you know, we we talk about um, uh, the content of the sites, right? Being focused on those things, right? Having clean content. There's a reason. There's a reason why we focus on um, food sites, parenting sites, um, and and overall general women and DIY sites. Um, with some finance and stuff like these are these are clean content, right? We have very few issues with advertisers. We don't have to have the too many battles where it's like, no, no, this is good inventory. Like, don't worry about it. Like, oh, I see, you know, five thousand recipes on this site. Good to go. I'm not worried about it. You know what I mean? Where with other sites, um, there there are a lot of those. Well, I want to be in, in this section. I don't want to be in the the love and health section, right? I don't want to be in this. I, so we the the focus there has also been. Um, a big help for for media buying growth. All good things and all all exciting and all only getting better. Um, yep. So I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in here because we you you wrote that blog post and we've been harping and harping on video. So I'm gonna kind of yes. deviate a little bit. So let's talk about video and how that is changing the industry as we go and how that's impacting advertisers and the way people are purchasing on sites. Right, video um, has been growing immensely over the last like five, six years, right? And the the problem with it is that it's it wasn't very uniform. So the technology just in the industry wasn't uh, quite, quite what um, it should be. Um, advertisers you know, were creating uh, ads in, in one format, but the majority were in this format and trying to, to link all that together caused a lot of headaches you know, over the last uh, eight, eight, nine years. Um, I would say probably in the last two or three years, that's become um, more general with the exchanges ex accepting more video, right? So they put kind of hard, fast rules down. You know, Google put some rules down about where video should run um, and what formats it should run in. And and I think we kind of held off in, in waiting for some of that to, to flush itself out. And then we um, and then we jumped in. And so in June, we had more video impressions uh, for Mediavine as a company than we had all in 2017, right? So it's becoming the year of video. It's coming true. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and it is, um, it's, it's a, a fantastic source of additional revenue, for little impact and, and little work on your side. Um, we've seen between, um, at the bare minimum, like a 10, 12% uh, jump in RPMs for our, our publishers that have added video awesome. and up to 20, 25%. Um, so look at your numbers and know that you could potentially have 25% more in revenue if you just do a few things to add video, um, work with us, you know, to, to let you create this and, and take care of that. Um, and I think about a third of our publishers right now are eligible. So I know a lot of you out there have still not done this. So please you know, pass the word. Um, this, this will help you a lot um, just to create a couple of video placements and, and get them in the right spots. And the, and the thing about it is I know that a lot of people, and I would be one of them, would hear, make a video, and that means I have to hire a cameraman, I have to have a crew, I have to have sets, right. I have to, and there's so many, we're, we're putting together resources for you right now, but you can create a slideshow of your top photos, there's there's ways yeah. to do this so you can capitalize, and we're, we're making it as easy as we can, talk to the publisher support team, and like I said, we're working on resources right now to make this a simpler process for you so you can capitalize. Right. I think anybody could, could create and, and get one live within a couple hours. 
um, 20% lift in your RPM is easily worth a couple hours of your time right now. I mean, yes, I think those are those are good numbers. Okay, right. so some person named Stephen Marcy, who I've never heard <laughs> of before, he's actually a Mediavine co-founder, and it's his birthday. Hi, Steve. Happy birthday to Yay, Steve. Yay, happy birthday, Steve. <laughs> uh, he wanted to know some tips on how publishers can make their own content more appealing to advertisers, which coincidentally, did you write a blog post on that, Phil? I did this week, yeah. Could someone um, go ahead and link that into our comments for me, please, on Facebook oh, yeah. and Phil and Phil talk about it? Right. So um, I think we're going to do another post on this um, to, as kind of a follow up. There's there's a lot of things you can do, and I think um, the first kind of rule of of anything is is just showing up, right? So and part of showing up is that you there's a few things that you have to do uh, to um, make sure that your blog is available in all of the exchanges. And, and I think, and that's kind of the, the focus of, of that blog post this week, right? So things, uh, every, every exchange, and we're working with about a dozen of them or so right now, has different rules for what they do is acceptable. What is an exchange? Uh, so an exchange is our monetiz monetization partner. So those are the, the Ebays of, of the world, kind of, of uh, programmatic world, right? Okay. So we we, uh, we send the in impressions out to the exchanges and then they send back a bid on what they think that um, particular impression is worth. Uh, so those are those are all of our, our partners that, that we work with. Um, so those guys um, all have different criteria uh, of what right. they'll approve and not approve. Um, they all request for a privacy policy. Um, they all do some sort of a manual inspection of every single one of our sites uh, to make sure that it's it is what it says it is. The URL works. Uh, that there's ads on page. Just all of these. There's like 20 things they look at within like a minute and then decide whether or not your site is available or not. One of the biggest things we get is um, there's no privacy policy because they can't find it. And so literally, well, we then they they you know take a week, send it back to us, and then we have to take, find time in the next day or two to type in into your search bar, uh, privacy, and then we get the link. Um, so if you add a link to the footer, that makes it really easy. Um, Content-wise, stay focused on, on G and PG content. Um, everybody has different rules for what they deem as questionable content or what they don't want advertisers to be next to. Um, and it depends on what advertisers they're working with. I know there was, um, I've worked with brands in the past that were very, very specific. It was a, a family, um, focus brand uh for like lunch type of uh meals is all i'll say i don't want to name any brand names or anything but they they were very specific about we will not be next to anything any kind of questionable content and they had literally a keyword list of, of thousands of words that they wanted to stay away from wow um and it could be things like earthquake or um uh like bedroom, like just weird stuff. Like they're like, you know, like we want this to be focused on, you know, food content or, or general parenting or kids or, or whatever it is. Um, and so be cognizant of that, right? So any, any post that you write, uh, it might be, you know, you could be doing this to totally amuse your friends or this really happened to you um, or, you know, it's whatever it is, just be careful with those things. Um, it, it don't, don't make it like a focus of your site. Um, and maybe not leave it on the home page for too long. Or if you do one of those, make sure you follow it up with like three or four food posts um, instead of like ba a back-to-back, -back, you know, kind of um, uh, humorous bedroom story or this gay story or something like that, right? Whatever it might be. Um, so there's those kind of things uh, to be aware of. Um, site speed is also... Um, very important, right? So if they go to the site and they're there for you know, three, five, ten seconds and mm -hmm. just doesn't even load, then then it, it not only puts your site in question, but the entire um, Mediavine family it puts in question. So please be aware of, of site speed um, also. Um, and then, I mean, those those are the big ones, right? Making sure that you, you just show up and then let us kind of um, do everything that we can to, to maximize the revenue on page, right? Um, the more um, exchanges you're approved in, the higher CPMs that you'll see just because of, of the more bidders there are on your inventory. Can you can you talk to me? I know that one of the blog posts uh, was too cluttered. What does too yes. cluttered mean? 
it's totally subjective. And like my hotel it, room, it's too it's, cluttered. <laughs> uh, this is one of the toughest things, but remember, um, you know, advertisers um, also will whitelist all of our sites, right? So when we we talk to you know some of the largest uh, CPG brands in the world, they have teams that are like, okay, send us your site list, and we have to approve these or um, uh, and uh, or compare Pause. it to a list. I, yep. You gave me another acronym, Phil. What's a CPG? Uh, a consumer product goods company. So I was trying not to name names, but Clorox, Procter and Gamble. Okay. Um, those guys, right? So okay. they just have multiple products. Unilever would be one, right? So some of the, the largest spenders uh, right. in advertising in the world, and especially for our category, um, retail is very, um, uh, it can be very picky as well um, wh where they run. Sure. Uh, so, so those guys will whitelist the sites also. Um, and um, sorry, what was the topic that you asked for? Question. Cluttered. Cluttered, yes. So they'll go to the site, and if they just, like, they're, they're used to working with very large um, publishers, right? right. Um, that you think of any magazine that you see that also has a website, right? So those guys um, have designers working on their site. So this is the kind of thing that they're used to seeing. And so if they uh, see you know, a small image and then, and it's, uh, lots of, lots of kind of standard, non-standard images, or, or if you even have like, um, an old logo that you may have created like eight, 10 years ago, that could be for, I don't know, your, your baking section, right. That's, you'll see those pixelated old logos that didn't kind of morph into, uh, this, this, uh, decades, um, web browser capabilities. Yeah. They'll be like, uh, what's going on with that logo? Like, they, like literally, these are questions that, that hurt. Yes, that like thinking, okay, if they didn't update this logo. What else is going on with that site, right? It's kind of the the real estate rule, right? If the grass hasn't been mowed in in a month, then what other problems are are going on with that house um, that I'm not aware of? So, um, totally arbitrary, probably not relevant or factual. But I mean, the you got to remember, these people have a minute to look at your site. And decide if they're they're going to because they're they're the holders of of um, the money for their client right this these are people at an agency or, or people at the company and millions of dollars are going through them and it's on them to one make sure that that advertising works and two they're putting it in in places that are would be acceptable right so if their boss goes and looks at this site list and they're like why did you put this these ads on this site um, it could it'll it'll hurt them also so as it trickles down. All of these people are, are vigilant on what where, what and where they will put ads. Um, and so we just have to make sure we put our best foot forward on on all of that. So it kind of sounds like, like as you were just using with the house metaphor, you've got to stage your site. And yep. in terms of that, can you tell us like where are the top places that these advertisers are visiting? Uh, are there, so if I'm gonna do like top down, what are the, the priorities to update first? Uh, first and foremost is the homepage, right? So when we send out a site list that has the homepage on there. So look at your homepage, look at other sites or other blogs that you might uh, follow or like, or, or look at one of those websites for a major magazine um, and, and kind of get an idea for, for that fits into your um, uh, same same type niche. of site. Yeah, that fits into your niche, exactly. Uh, and, and see what they're doing and like how it looks, right? Um, and, and sites have morphed over the years too, right? Where if you don't have a right rail or a left rail, um, then it looks kind of strange. Or if you don't have, um, uh, if you if you have like twelve things in the header and they're all drop downs, and like that was fun to do, you know, six seven years ago, right. um, it's it's became a little more clean since then. And, and the landing page, and now you know everything is kind of one or two page or one or two things in the um, nav bar. Um, and, and then you can go to a landing page and find out more, right? So just, just be aware of, of what other sites are doing, um, and I think you'll be fine. Um, and if you haven't updated um, anything in your, you know, uh, over the last three or four years, you, you probably want to look at it. Yeah, and the, the thing about that, and that's exactly like I, I talk about um, – sponsored work and working with brands a lot because that's what I used to do and Steffi does as well and these right. companies these entities consume the sites in a completely different way than our consumers do they right. they're they're going through the front door whereas our um, our 
our readers are coming through the bathroom window because they came through Pinterest or whatever, but right. they're yeah, viewing exactly. actually. So you can make your front door look awesome and have curb appeal and, and do well with these people. Agreed. Yep, that's a good analogy. Thanks, Phil. Uh, so, okay. Kind of creepy coming in the bathroom door window, but. I mean, I, let's try something. They're coming in through your laundry room. Okay, that, that makes less sense. creepy. Yeah, Your yeah, kitchen. yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. I don't want to creep you out, Phil. Uh, <laughs> so, okay, this this is um, this is, so. Can you explain how an ad gets on my blog? Like, how does it come from an advertiser to a website? Oh, and quickly yeah. before we start, Amy Sugarman wants to say thank you for making us all the money. <laughs> thank you for being one of our publishers, Amy. Yes. All right. Amy's going to be with us, as is Courtney, a little bit later on a live in August. They're going to talk about oh. uh, bumping that RPM. Yeah. yeah nice. That'll be, yeah. be good. It's going to be those fun. Two are, those two are on it. Listen to the tune into that one. That's where the good hints will come. Yeah, you um, can turn us off. This is we're not yeah. doing anything good here. <laughs> Just tune away. Uh, okay. So, Phil, tell me, how does an advertisement actually get on my blog? Okay. Uh, so there's actually a lot of steps, but like. And they happen very quickly, and they're all Do you have very. Have a whiteboard? Awkward. I don't. I should have thought of that. Uh, but I can kind of give it just just kind of the basics, right? right so, okay. like I said, it's it's um, it's high speed eBay. So first thing first, right? You put our ad tags on your page, um, and with that, you know, comes some some header bidding code, some uh, some other programmatic pieces, right? Um, and first thing, one of the first things that fires is that code, um, and what that does is it it sends out. Um, any data that's already been associated with that person's browser, right? So if this person was on Amazon looking at, you know, $300 Nikes, um, that person is going to be very valuable um, and they're probably going to get a lot of bids on, on that uh, particular person's page and impressions. Um, so first thing first is it fires, it sends off like, hey, this is a cooking site. This is a recipe for fried chicken. Um, the, the user is in, um, Tennessee, they um, have you know have multiple cookies for retail shopping and and some other um, habits here, um, and and the big one that sticks out will be that three hundred dollar pair of Nikes that they that they were looking at. Right. Um, so we send that out to you know twelve or fifteen exchanges. Um, all of those uh, exchanges then ingest that data, and they've got uh, different data sets on their side that they might be able to match that that cookie. Um, and, and the data for that person differently. Each one might match it differently. Um, and Amazon being one of our partners is going to see that and say like, whoa, this dude really likes these crazy expensive Nikes. Um, I'm going to bid you know, $12 for that person. Um, and then everybody else, um, and, and this goes out to, and to another acronym for you, through a, DS, through a DSP, which is a demand oh. side platform. Okay. So it's kind of like, um, in uh, if if eBay had um, like if it went directly to every seller on eBay, right? So that would be the exchange side would be the the actual retail stores. If it was different than um, eBay itself, right? So the those quirky little names that they have for all the stores in eBay, right? And right. then eBay would kind of be the the uh, the DSP side of it. So eBay matches all of those together, kind of like the exchange matches all those together, but as I'm explaining this. So it goes to the exchange, exchange passes it to the DSP, um, and within the DSP lives all of um, the criteria that the advertisers have set up. So they're like, if I see you know, these data points, I'm going to bid this much. If I see, um, if I don't see these data points, I'm, I'm not going to bid, or I'm only gonna bid this much, right? So maybe they'll bid on like, it's a cooking site. So um, I, I don't know, Crisco will bid you know, 50 cents, but eBay, is bidding twelve dollars because they have the shoe data point um, that's already there. Um, so all of those guys send back their bids um, in under roughly half a second, um, and then uh, it goes to our ad server, um, which is a, a Google ad server, um, and and everything gets to compete at once. And then the highest bid um, then is sent back saying you win, and they serve that ad. Um, it's kind of the, the the quickest and easiest way of, of uh, describing all of this. And then that ad is then pushed onto your page and displayed. Do they have a party when they win? Or they is it not. too fast? They That's win millions of times a day. And, um, yeah. 
and and some some people bid uh, like you we we kind of weed these things out but when you go to sites and you see some questionable ads um, it's because they have their floors very low um, and they'll uh, allow in um, the belly fat ads and, and those things so those guys are out there bidding like 20 30 cents at a time just just to like kind of flood the marketplace just to flood the ads so that you're aware of them and they'll get some clicks that way we try to uh, weed that kind of stuff out and make the advertisers that really want to be on the site and give them access, um, which goes back to another great blog post of the why we don't strive for 100% fill rate right. um, kind of thing. So explain, I, this is the Jenny question. So on yeah. some, the cookies are matched, which by the way is 100 times creepier than my bathroom uh, entrance analogy that people are, they're watching everything you do and everything yeah. I've looked at. Yeah. I talked about but they're one confined your computer there in your phone as opposed to like actually being behind me. I get physically being there. Bill, I'm not no? buying it. It's still okay. creepy. <laughs> okay, so when what is the difference? Because sometimes a brand will want to buy out and they can buy out a full site. And then yep. how does that compete with the exchanges when they're matching all the cookies? So those are becoming more more and more less frequent those kind of things right where they wanted a uh, they would call it a hundred percent share of voice right so they want to hit you know 20 big food blogs or or whatever it is or or niche food blogs for vegan or, or something like that and they would buy all those inventory and make a big splash um and to uh that particular audience um and those those are tough because with the availability of back-end metrics of to, to know what actually works and what drives sales like every every ad you see there is something tracking it there to see how how well it performs um and if anybody's paid, paid attention to like the um uh the the trouble that facebook has been in and and with uh, the different political campaigns right so they would be able to literally and advertisers can do this too they can they can create um ads on the fly um to kind of cater to your specific um, area or your specific computer or you. Yes, this is super creepy. Mm -hmm. um, to to make it more likely that you'll click on it or show interest in this or, or to make you aware of it. Um, and I think that's proven to be more effective than, um, than just the, the general, like hit as many vegan sites as possible um, because you don't know for sure that you know this person is a vegan just because of visiting the site. But if, if they have um, the data on the back end to show that they visited 10 vegan sites uh, over the last you know, two months, then chances are more than likely that's probably a, a vegan um, as opposed to someone just coming to the site for the day to like just to understand what veganism actually is or, or something, right? So um, uh, there, there's some of those things still do happen. Like you'll see it with like um, uh, movies or things that are on a specific date or um, uh, for uh, big sales. Um, for different retailers might do things a little larger uh, scale. Um, so some of those things do happen, but even those now are, they're asking for targeting um, and, and want to target on their side as, as well. Um, so it's, it's not as common to see just a blanket ad um, across the site for a couple of days or, or a full day um, for one particular advertiser. Interesting, interesting. Okay, we got a question from our uh, executive office assistant, Sarah. She is looking for new housing, so she's not she's not with us monitoring questions as she normally is, but she wants to know, what is Mediavine doing to stay on the cutting edge of programmatic sales? How quickly is the industry evolving, and where do you see it heading in the near future? So um, we've, we've hired a team that is extremely programmatic savvy. Uh, so there's myself, you know, six, seven years of experience. Um, our two sellers um, that we have, Aaron and Rachel, um, are both amazing and, and have uh, five plus years of experience. Um, and when you think about how, and, and this is strictly programmatic selling, right? They've been doing this for five years, only programmatic. Um, and so they um, are probably one of a, a few hundred in the industry that, that have been doing it for that long and have that experience. Um, a lot of sellers um, are still focused on kind of a hybrid or are still learning it. Um, these two are as knowledgeable as anybody in the industry. So that's one, is that we've hired a great team. Um, and two, that this is one of my favorite parts of, of a conversation with an advertiser, right? So we're on the phone with Target. 
Um, and we talk about like, yeah, yeah, this is what we're doing for um, you know Q4, and this is what we're making available. And this is how video works, and like all these things. But then I always ask them like, what are you guys working on to make sure that you know whatever it is that they're looking forward to, um, that we we're available for when when they are start launching that, right? Um, and we have the same conversations with our exchanges and they also have um, sales teams. And so we're talking with them. And, and so if they're pushing a particular product, um, if it makes sense and, and it's not something too uh, intrusive or, or questionable, we'll, we'll jump on that stuff right away and start learning what it is um, because you don't know uh, specifically what's going to hit, you know, like uh, he header bidding, um, what came out, you know, like a year and a half, two years before it actually took off, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, if I had just been like, yeah, yeah, I want to wait until, um, you know, the New York times is doing this and then I'll believe that it works or you know, somebody else to take off on this um, will be behind. So whatever it is that someone brings up to us, um, I'm curious to learn more about it and to see, you know, if we can test it and how we can test it. Um, something that we're doing right now is, is server to server testing um, in a couple of formats and uh, you know last year we it, this was relatively new last year and we tested it and it performed terribly so this year it's actually had a year to um, kind of grow and, and become uh, more standardized and so we're testing it again and, and it's showing decent returns and so we're looking to expand it and, and see if it could be another method um, uh, for us to, to monetize uh, our sites Excellent. All right. We'll give it a second chance, server to server. Don't All despair. Of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, okay. So, who is buying that? I hear people say premium partners all the time. I hear people say yeah. all these things. You talked about ad exchanges, but who, who are all these people? Um, I mean, for the most part, it is um, we look at it a couple of ways. One is the, the DSPs, um, the just um, acronym. Yeah, the demand side platforms, um, because that's who the agencies work through to buy programmatically. Uh, and so um, we, we have a couple of reports that we get each month that, that breaks down like who's buying this. So that's one, right? So uh, those demand side platforms, we know who, which ones the advertisers are using and which ones are working is so we have a relationship with those guys. Um, and then each demand side platform uh, then uh, works with multiple agencies or advertisers direct, right? So then we, we break down the reporting into a, a smaller level. And we see that, you know, AT&T and, uh, you know, Unilever and, and uh, um, trying to, The Gap and, and, and Macy's are buying us through DBM, right? So then we have those conversations with those guys. Um, so the biggest, the biggest vendors are um, DBM and the Trade Desk on the DSP side. So those are two of our bigger partners. Um, and then there's a, another level of like the media math and some of these guys. So those you've never heard of. That's like the technology side. Um, but then the actual advertisers that are buying us, um, it's think of anybody, um, major company, and, and you'll have a good idea of who's buying us, right? So Target is buying us. Home Depot buys us a decent amount. Um, Procter and & Gamble um, and, and all of their products buy us a fair amount. Um, Kroger's, which owns you know, multiple grocery stores, buys us a decent amount. Um, insurance companies, Geico and, and Allstate, buy us a decent amount. Uh, so it's it's across the board, and and it fluctuates um, from for seasonality or for certain times of the year um, as well. But I, I think those guys are, are pretty standard. Um, and it's if, if, that's interesting. Like I and if. Um, Publishers are curious. I mean, I think it's probably something we can kind of release a little more often. Like, hey, these are the big spenders that that uh, come through all the exchanges, um, and, and pass on some more info on that. I think that'd be great. We can definitely do that. So, yeah. why is there a summer slump? What happens there? I think uh, I think because I think there's a couple reasons, and I think our industry sees it more than others probably do. Um, one of the biggest ones is summer break. Uh, so school is out, um, kids are home, uh, vacations are happening. So I think there's just a little less, um, and it's warm, right? So everybody's outside, ball games, beaches, like all that. So I think there's just a little less consumption um, happening there. 
um, from, from that aspect. Um, and number two is there's not a huge buying uh, reason for advertisers to be getting in front of you, right? So um, this, this is why Amazon created Prime Day in July is because there's a lull here. There's not a lot going on. Once July 4th is done, there's not another holiday in, until September, um, especially a holiday that would uh, generate a lot of spend. Um, and so I think you add those those two things together. There's just less demand um, coming in, which which the advertisers that continue buying, they might have had to pay you know five six dollars in in May and June when there's quite a bit of demand as as things are wrapping up. Um, and then uh, it's there's now less demand, so they're now buying it for three dollars uh, kind of thing. So all of those things added together, and for whatever reason, um, this is a universal trend. At the end of a month, if you look at like your RPMs. Uh, you will see stronger RPMs for those days than you will at the beginning of the month. And that has to do with like a buying schedule. So advertisers like say, I want to spend 100K this month. Um, and I'm like, okay, cool. I'm spending, um, you know, 5K a day. Um, or and, and, and then so I get like kind of my campaign set and then I'll start spending 10K a day. Um, and, and I average, a, you know, a $5 CPM at the end of the month. Everybody's like, oh, I might not be able to spend this entire campaign. So it, spent, it picks up as they are set on this, this calendar deadline. Um, so they bid more. There's more demand. There's more people trying to finish out that month. Like there's all these little buying cycles. And end of the quarter is always stronger than uh, beginning of a quarter also. So June, we see this fantastic June for those reasons, um, end of a quarter and, and kind of um, uh end of or beginning of summer like vacations are getting planned you know these kind of things and then july like all of that's done it's the start of a new quarter buyers aren't um pushing as hard uh in, in a couple of those things and then you'll see it pick up again in august when back to school starts to happen and it becomes the middle of the quarter and then september will be a very strong month and then q4 is just fantastic q4 is party time for all of us yeah please if I get video live by Q4. Yeah, guys. Like a twenty percent increase in like Q2 and and Q1 like will be like a thirty five percent increase in, in Q4. Like it's Got we're it. we're very excited for Q4 this year. I'm excited too, um, especially like as I said that I'm in Charleston and it's a hundred thousand degrees here. Okay, so the uh, Steve and Annette Economides just said, Jenny, <laughs> you're gonna crack up. As Phil says the acronyms, can you spell them out in the comments? <laughs> this is flying by fast for a newbie. Okay, everyone's like, he's laughing because I do. The, I say this every time he talks to me. I go, Phil, that was just a lot of letters. You just said letters. Uh, so can we do the big ones? Can we like talk yes. about the big? And then I've got, um, yes, Amy Sugarman, Q4. Uh, <laughs> so I've got people standing by. Steffi and Susanna and Megan are here. They're going to help. Let's start with, let's break the biggest acro acronyms okay. down. Uh, let's see. So um, the, the one I just have said multiple times today, a, a DSP is David Sam Phillip uh, program, whatever you want to use in there. Um, and uh, that's the demand side platform. Um, and then the SSP, which we'll also use exchanges for, but um, Sam Sam program um, for an SSP. Why can't I think of what like a good P word is right now? <laughs> Polly. Paul. There you go. Sam, Sam, Paul. There you go. Um, and then the CPM, I think we, we may have brought up uh, you today. Did see, yeah, you said it. Yeah. So Charles, Paul, Mary. Um, and, and the CPM is is what on the on the sell, sell side, that's what we talk in. Um, so as much as you guys talk RPMs, um, Richard, Paul, Mary's, uh, we talk in <laughs> And Sam Sam Paul's SSP, <laughs> we talk yeah. in CPMs, um, and uh, that's that's the the number that we that's the the dollar amount. And what that means is this five dollar CPM means five dollars for every thousand ads, um, and they might not even buy a thousand ads, but that's the the rate that they'll get. Right? So instead of that breaking down into point zero 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 five cents. <laughs> <laughs> for that one particular impression right or whatever um that's we'd say it's a five dollar cpm okay uh, and um let's see what other ones have i talked about today um and and to be honest with you there are acronyms that like i'm still learning like agencies especially like each agency internally has their own um uh acronym speak and and they'll throw something out and then i have to look and ask somebody and none of these are googleable 
Um, so like they don't exist anywhere else. And so I'll have to ask. And so believe me, as, as silly as you might feel like asking for what these actually mean, I have to do it to people I'm asking for money. So uh, we, we all get in, we're all in that boat sometimes. So no, no worries. I'm happy to explain. Um, let's see what other oh, RPM um, is uh, revenue per thousand. And, and that's per page. Um, that's, that's one that we talk about a lot. And that's the one that I think most of our, our bloggers um, are familiar with um, and, and look at, you know, every hour on the hour. I think some of them are at least daily. Um, that's a good number to know, you know where you're at um, and, and how much money you know, you're kind of making, knowing that you've got a, a $20 RPM, you've got 10,000 pages. That's pretty easy math to, to figure out. So that's so. Can you explain those two and the difference between those two? CPM uh, between, and RPM. Yeah, uh, RPM is is still based off of a thousand page, uh, uh, the, the the thousand number, um, mm -hmm. just because it's an easy way to kind of calculate it. And, Which and is the M, the milli. Yeah, the M, the milli, the, the Latin um, word for a thousand. Um, it's just become kind of universally used in advertising for uh, probably forty, fifty thousand. Uh, wait, did I say 40, 50,000, 40 or 50 years, 40 or 50 years, 40 or 50,000 years of digital. Yeah. <laughs> T-Rex used to transact in CPU. When he had uh, his little arms and he would punch in there. Trying to do math. Yeah. With an uh, abacus. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Tracks. We just um, derailed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, so for like last, 40, 50 years, that's that's the way that advertising is transacted is just to kind of give a base price based on what a thousand impressions um, for whatever the newspaper uses it, um, uh, radio use it, um, you know, those kind of things that would back it into a, a cost per thousand as well. So uh, and fun fact, before the internet, I used to sell radio. That was my first, first sales gig. Ah, um, Wolfman Phil. Yeah, right. <laughs> I like that. Um, and so RPMs, like, it's just a simple way for you to look at it by, uh, by page, right? So that's what that's one of the things that publishers are looking at, just like to know how many pages they have and in, in the average cost, right? Um, and on that page, there could be you know three ads, there could be ten ads, depending on the length of the, the page and everything. Um, and uh, knowing your, we, I think we also show CPM, right? So knowing the average um, paid price for every single ad on your pay on your site um is, is what that cpm would break down to so um individual you know, like, units placements yep, right yep so okay. yeah so you have a short page that has has three ads on it um or if you have a long page with 10 ads on it you know, all of those combined is what that cpm that average cpm is um same as your your rpm is you know every page combined is is the average on those pages um okay. and, and then we're talking to uh, an advertiser, they they're not looking at uh, pages specifically, right? They're looking at individual impressions, individual ads, um, and that's what uh, why we talk to them this in, in CPMs. Okay, all right. So speaking of all of these different ways of analyzing and and looking mm -hmm. at this, how can our publishers use the MediaVine dashboard and all the data that's given to them to really? get a individual view of things and to get a top view down to really analyze what's happening and use that to improve their ad revenue. Right. So I think first and foremost, right, is, is to know um, that, you know, go for teal, like understand that and, and that breakdown and to look at the definitions for all of those items. Those are, those are amazing tools to let you know, like, Hey, we're, we're giving you the, the biggest things you can do and change or improve uh, to make yourself more money. Right. Those are super easy. Um, those are fantastic. And then, um, uh, well, to clarify, good. easy to understand, not necessarily uh, easy yes, to do not for easy your to jillions achieve. of posts. Yes. But yes. Right. But like right. easy to understand. Yeah. Easy to understand. Like these are things, these are the, the things that will, you know, grow your revenue by 10, 10 percent, um, and fix these things. Right. Uh, and then know, um, knowing your mix of like, um, mobile versus desktop. Like just, you know, simple things like this, like just understanding what's happening on your site because it's a different ad experience. Um, and and one of the trickiest things with mobile is there's not nearly as much cookie data on phones as there is on, on your desktop. Um, and so the CPMs on mobile are lower than they are on desktop. Um, we've done 
a million things to combat this and, and to grow. And we, we get amazing CPMs on mobile, but know that it's probably your CPMs on mobile are probably half of what they are on desktop. Um, so just as much as you might hate this stuff, um, it's good for, for all of you as business owners to like look at these things and, and understand it. Um, and, and look, our publishing team is amazing. If you have any questions, they'll, they'll answer it or, or they'll send it up my way if there's something that you know, they don't quite get. Um, but we will always answer those questions. Um, and uh, another fantastic thing is they're showing you like your most popular pages. Your most popular um, posts. Oh, yeah, your most popular post, correct, sorry. Um, and that that's a fantastic way of knowing like who's coming to your site or if you if you look at those you know 10 posts and know um that if what if i improve this a little bit what if i made it a little longer to get a couple more um ads in there you know what if i added a follow-up to this like like that's in a way you know what you're becoming known for in in google's eyes or um in in this um pinterest post or, or whatever it is right so think of ways that you can improve on that i think that's fantastic and we're um we're working on some things to to hopefully be able to give you more data on that of like how um more than just your top 10 pages are performing and and what the revenue associated with those pages are and and some things like that to help you make some decisions so i'm sure there'll be more on that in the near future and some blog posts to help out um and understand that stuff um add a video and of course, yeah, video, adding the video in there. Uh, I think understanding, you know, where um, your uh, visitors are coming from, right? So average is probably 80 to 85% of all visits are coming from the US. Mm -hmm. um, and then probably 5% Canada, 5% UK, and 5% Australia, roughly, um, are the rest. And the rest of the rest of the world, right? But if you are a niche site, um, you know, in, for Brazilian cooking, you know, maybe 20% of your, um, inventory is coming from Brazil. Uh, the U S is, um, by all standards, probably the, you know, the richest country in the world and the most, um, the, the largest advertising, uh, nation in the world also. So, Every company that we talk to that might have, might have originated in, in Israel or China or, or the UK or whatever, like they want to get into the US. They want to have a good presence in the US right. because um, that's the, the largest advertising market for them or for anybody. Uh, so know that like if you do have a lot of, of Brazilian traffic, think about what you could do to, you know, um, to continue to do what you're doing, but make sure that you know you're, you don't leave that US number behind. Um, some of those things would be important to, to notice, right? They all have an effect on your RPMs. Um, and look, if you're passionate about Brazilian cooking and you wanna stick with it, I'm not telling you not to, but just know that these have an effect on on the revenue and, and where things come from, right? If you, if, if you see a dip in revenue and you see that um, your traffic went from 20% Brazilian traffic to 50% Brazilian traffic, that's going to have an effect on, on revenue. So I think that's um, helpful and an interesting thing to look at. I mean, we, we started looking at um, our, our CPMs by state and by um, large cities and, and, and breaking those down to understand like why advertisers might be bidding more there or less um, as well, like to, to improve that stuff on our side to, to help make all of you money too. Awesome. Okay, so with all the dashboard stuff that we were just talking about using that data, I just had uh, Susanna post her two fantastic going deep dives into the Mediavine dashboard blog posts that explain each and every metric that we show there, all of the different um, data that we give you. And when you were saying right. go for teal, you're talking about the site health, which yeah. are the lights up in the top, and we're always wanting you to go for those teal stars. And just quickly, if, if you're wanting to uh, analyze those top 10 posts, the site health is always on the, the last three days, yes, Phil? And so sometimes you need to ice the, the dashboard doesn't default to the last three days. So if you want if you right, have a right. change in those lights, you want to change those dates to those to the to the last three days so that it will accurately reflect what's happening. Because oftentimes that's why when someone says my end content went from a teal star to a yellow light and I don't know why, it's because the traffic is shifting on the on those yeah. top posts. So you want to isolate the post to make sure that you're um, you're looking at what the site health is reflecting. Yep, very true. 
All righty. Okay, Phil, so we're about out of time, but I'm going to have okay. one more question for you, and I want it to be what you are most looking forward to coming up in, in the final half of 2018 and beyond, and then I'm going to make a couple quick announcements and give you a second to think about that. Okay. All right, everybody, so all of our previous Summer of Live uh, broadcasts have now been uploaded to our YouTube channel, so that's youtube.com backslash Mediavine. Please go there, subscribe. All of our Go For Teal videos from Eric are on there. We've got conference videos, anything you could want to see. Great content for content creators, and we're uploading more weekly. So please go ahead and visit there. Next week on the Summer of Live, as we keep going, we are talking about five things to take your travel blogging to the next level. I'm so excited to have Leah Garcia and Christina Guan, two amazing travel bloggers with Mediavine that's going to give you all the top tips and everything they've observed from being out into the world, really in the world, and seeing everything that's going on and in their industry. And other than that, we're so excited. If you're at Haven and you're watching, come say hi to us. We're going to be in the booth. We'll be posting all over social media to show you guys what we're up to here. And we're very, very excited about the rest of live. Okay, Phil, last question for you. Uh, so a couple of things that I'm, I'm really excited about. Um, one is um, create. Uh, Lead by Create, so our recipe card and, and DIY card that we're working on. Um, one, it's going to be functional and, and fantastic, and we've got all the dev resources working on this to make sure that it's going to function exactly how we should. The second part of that is it's going to have some fantastic data that we can then sell to advertisers. Um, so all of you that um, are looking at this and thinking like, oh, this is going to be this nice piece that will you know add to my side and, and simplify my life, know that it, it's also going to be a tremendous asset to add to your RPMs um, and, and something that will be very targetable um, without dropping crazy cookies and getting all creepy and, and stuff. Um, it'll just be, we'll be able to separate out and say like, hey, we've got 10,000 chicken recipes um, throughout all of our media buying publishers or uh, some of those other things that we'll be able to sell. Um, that's so one. You'll call up Tyson and say, hey, what up? 10,000 chicken recipes. Okay. Yep, exactly. You want to be associated with every chicken recipe, uh, you know, uh, on the internet. Come, come talk. To you us. want chicken? We got chicken. Yep. <laughs> um, and as so we're working on all of getting all of that sorted out, so on launch, that should be ready to go as well. Um, so I'm really excited about that. That's one I've been working with the team on. And two, just there's a bunch of things we're, we're working on the back end. So, like I mentioned, you should start to see some more things. Um, the, in, in the dashboard for you guys, that's a part of a big data push on our side to get smarter about everything that we're doing and, and be able to um, capture and drive as much revenue as possible. Uh, and, and the final thing is that a lot of these relationships that we've been working on since um, we got a sales team end of last year, those, those, move, those can move slowly sometimes. Like they've got fiscal years that they don't change and, and move things. But I think all of that the second half of the year, a lot of those are going to start spending. So you'll see some advertisers probably a little more heavily than you have in the past. Um, and so I'm, I'm really excited about that as well. That's We've got a lot to look forward to. A great yeah. second half of 2018. Yep. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right, Phil, thanks so much for being here with us. We had a great time. Thank you. Talk All to right. You later. Bye, everyone. Have a great weekend.